The death of King Henry VIII in 1547 brought an era of uncertainty across England. His son Edward VI took the throne, and many were concerned that his rule would later be more brutal and ruthless than that of his father, a man who executed roughly around 70,000 people across his nation, including some of his closest friends and two of his own wives. If Edward VI would have lived longer and had children, it's possible that these heirs would have reigned for some time, and that the Tudor dynasty would have lasted a lot longer than it did. He was the great hope for the country following Henry VIII's death, but what came was further religious changes and even more persecution. However, Edward VI himself succumbed to a horrific death at the age of 15 within Greenwich Palace. The king had been ordered to rest, but his final days were tragic and brutal, and following his death he was buried inside of Westminster Abbey. But for centuries his burial place had been lost, but then in the centuries following, people broke into his coffin, following its location, and what was found was rather shocking. Join us today as we look at opening the coffin of Edward VI, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. At the age of just nine, Edward VI became the King of England, following the death of his father Henry VIII. He was crowned as the king inside of Westminster Abbey, and to help rule for him as he was a child, a regency council was set up to help him govern. The man who headed this was Edward Seymour, who was appointed the Lord Protector, and he was also the uncle of the king. But Edward was not considered to have been a sickly child to begin with, but throughout his short reign he did fall ill a number of times. In the year 1550, he was hit by a severe illness, and some of the royal doctors and physicians believed that Edward would die from this. However, there was a worry as to who would become the next king or queen if he did die. Edward VI did survive, but further illnesses struck years later. The king was known to have contracted smallpox in his early life, and also measles, and it was true that the king could rally and recover with strength. However, he also suffered with his hearing, and was known to have been slightly deaf, and he was also given glasses to wear. But in December 1552, there would be a severe bout of illness which hit the king, and this would be his final illness. Edward VI, by all accounts, had tuberculosis, and his immune system was failing. It continued for weeks and months, and on the 15th of February 1553, the king was suffering with a cold, which gave him a fever, and Mary, his eldest sister, and the future queen, would come to see him. But he could not get out of bed, and he was also suffering with a very bad cough, and some inside the royal court believed that the king could have been subject to a possible assassination plot, or a poisoning plot. But Edward VI had many terrible symptoms, and these were very serious, and were leading the king to waste away. Some of the greatest doctors across the land tried their best to treat him, including one woman who was a faith healer, and she was allowed to see the king, and she gave him a remedy or a poison that led to the king's limbs to swell up, and he was almost killed with this treatment. In the middle of March 1553, the king was getting more seriously ill, and the following month he did recover slightly, and was seen by some walking inside of a local park, but he was then well enough to be moved to Greenwich Palace to recover and get better. But this would never happen, and Greenwich Palace would be the place where the king died. Edward was seen as getting sicker and sicker, and he would also cough up blood. But there was a consideration that the king had issues with his lungs, and that this was the root cause of his demise and death. It was clear to many that the king had consumption or TB, as it is known today, and Edward the Sixth limbs swelled up and broke out in sores, and on the 17th of May 1553, he held court with a number of ambassadors, and they later reported on the young boy's sorry state. He was struggling to sleep, and was suffering with a very bad demise. He was just a young man, and some people would turn to God, and consider that Edward must have committed sin. But he then changed his line of succession, and he made his heir, his cousin Lady Jane Grey, who was a prominent Protestant. But the king's last few days were even worse than what he experienced before. His hair began to fall out, and he could no longer stand, only lay down in his bed. But the final public sighting of Edward VI was on the 1st of July 1553, when he was spotted by a crowd standing by a window in the palace. However, on the 6th of July 1553, Edward VI died at 8 o'clock in the evening. He was held by a prominent courtier, Sir Henry Sidney, and Edward's final words were, I'm faint, 
Lord, have mercy upon me and take my spirit. But the doctors following his death conducted an autopsy. They then cut open his chest and found out that the king had severe lung issues and a very bad lung infection and that ulcers were found on these vital organs. Following the autopsy, Edward VI's body was embalmed and his heart and vital organs were removed and then the cavity of his chest was filled with spices to preserve his body from decay. His body was then buried inside of Westminster Abbey and it was the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Cranmer, who took the funeral service. The funeral procession of Edward VI was huge and the body was taken by barge to Whitehall the night before the funeral ceremony and his body the next day was then taken to Westminster Abbey. There was a huge amount of ceremony for the boy king. After the funeral had been completed, Edward VI's coffin was then lowered into a white marble vault which had been crafted in front of an altar which had been made for Edward's grandfather, Henry VII, the first Tudor monarch. Edward VI's burial vault was not very big at all. The small space measures 2.3 metres long and just 75 centimetres wide and it was close to the entrance of the burial vault of Henry VII and Elizabeth of York his grandparents and also those who founded the Tudor dynasty and brought an end to the Wars of the Roses. Over the centuries there were debates as to move Edward VI's body and to place it in the same vault as Mary I, his half-sister, but this never occurred. But there would be a significant amount of desecration of his vault, as during the English Civil War in 1643, the altar near to his vault was broken up and attacked, and parliamentarians had a habit of ransacking burial vaults and destroying royal tombs. Because of this, the burial vault of Edward VI was then lost for over 200 years. In 1868, parts of the altar that had been smashed up were found, and a new altar was then built, but during this time the coffin of Edward VI was opened, and his vault was also opened. The wooden outer shell of his coffin had at some point been taken away and cleared away, and it was very badly damaged, leading to the conclusion that someone had broken into the vault before, and someone may have robbed the tomb. But witnesses who opened the vault claimed that the lead coffin of the boy king had deformed as well as wasted by long corrosion. With this it meant that the king's remains had been on display for some time, and that through the damage his body could be seen. There were no repairs ever done to give him a new coffin or a better burial, but it was claimed that Edward VI's seer cloth had fallen away and showed that no hair was attached to the skull. Because of this opening, Edward's remains had been decayed heavily, and his remains had become a skeleton. At the time, there were other Tudor figures whose burial vaults were opened, and it was seen that they were well preserved, but Edward's was different. Edward's coffin had also been heavily damaged, and obviously had been broken into. There was never a grand tomb and monument created for Edward VI, and today only a small memorial plaque marks the site of his burial. There had been a significant amount of desecration of the Tudor boy King's remains, and over the years his vaults had been broken into. He was a great hope that Henry VIII had to become a king who would rule for decades, but Edward VI's death was harrowing, and he suffered a terrible fate in his last few months. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.